Tierra here with Gypsy Bay Creations. Thanks so much for tuning in. Typically every year I take all of my soap shreds and scraps from when I bevel my bars and clean them up and I had this big collection of them and I usually put them in what's called a confetti soap that makes it look like confetti and a new bar soap but I thought I'd mix it up a little bit this year. What happens if I take all of those soap shreds and I put them into a craft pot and melt them all down? I kind of already know it's going to be a pretty funky bar soap, and I can tell you it's a process called rebatching. I've watched a lot of soap makers here on YouTube do it. I thought I would give it a try. Let's get started. Let's take all my soap ends and soap scraps and soapy bits and put them into a crock pot. Let's make some soap. <laughs> art crock pot here that I got from Goodwill for five dollars. It's on its last leg. I don't know how many two lives it's going to have left but it's great for things like making soap in it. That, that way I don't have to use the one I make food in. You know how it goes. And then this is all of my soap scraps. Reasons why you might want to rebatch a soap. Um, it seized on you so you didn't get the shape or design that you were going for. Um, color morph like van vanilla stabilize or <laughs> vanilla content in your fragrance can turn your soaps very brown. I've just got a whole bunch of shavings from like the bevels that I usually do when cleaning up my soap and then I throw into a confetti. This time I'm just going to throw it all into this crock pot. There's like soap ends in here. Or you could just do this for fun, you know? All right, so I'm going to throw all of this, holy moly, that's a lot. I didn't think I would have that much, and I sure do. So I'm gonna throw this all in here. Oh, it's so fun looking. <laughs> and I'm gonna get some distilled water, and I'm just gonna put a little bit in at a time, maybe do like two ounces, and then two ounces, and then let's turn this bad boy on low. Um, start with just a little bit of water and melt this all down. A lot of soap makers who do rebatches typically try to color coordinate things so that when you melt this all down you don't have like a rainbow throw up in this pot and at least your soaps are all very uniform looking so you would put like colors with like colors. This is going to be interesting. This is just going to be like yeah, not pretty, not very attractive, but it'll still be soap. <laughs> so I'm going to put this lid on here, and we are going to let this sit probably 25 minutes, and then I'll just come back and just stir away at it. All right, let's give it our first stir. Starting to really fit in the bowl better now. <laughs> So I'll start to melt down. It smells good. It smells like chocolate right now, but there are so many different fragrances in this. I don't even, I can't even count how many fragrances are in this. I think though that when this is heated up, all that fragrance though should, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. <laughs> this is such an ugly looking soap. So I'm going to let it sit for another 20 minutes. I think I'm going to add eh, maybe a little bit of more water in there. A little splash of water. And then I will let that sit for 20 minutes and I'll stir some more. Alright, let's take the lid off this. I think I'm happy with the consistency. It looks like <laughs> it is not the prettiest soap and I keep saying that but it is still soap and I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Um, just thought it would be a fun thing to try. 
and it might even be cool to cut into, you never know. But again, I've never tried hot process and I want to try that one day. I've never tried this method, which is a rebatch, so I had to try that. And I've been inspired by a lot of the soap makers I watch on here, like um, Renee over at uh, Soaps for Love and Jen Spice at Gentle Soaps and Patrick over at Soapy Oaks. I have been watching all of their videos and I love all the little batches that they do so they have just inspired me to try this. At this point I could either put in some fragrance or some other colorant and I don't think I should. I'm going to leave it just like it is. It even has a chocolate fragrance to it because I did put a couple bars of chocolate soap in here that turned brown on me. So it kind of still makes sense that it's brown and it smells like chocolate so I'm going to try getting this into my mold like this. <laughs> I don't know how much this is going to fill up and I don't know how easy it is it's going to be to put in here but I want to give it a try. Um, I've also been watching these soap makers do very charitable things like donate soap lately. They've just been spreading not only inspiration in, through soap making but through their um, deeds and, and messages. Um, they've been dropping soaps off at different homeless shelters and I don't know. I live near Baltimore City. That might be something that I do. Um, or I'm sure it's not going to be that hard to go find someone who wants this soap. I can just give it away. Or if there's any soldiers overseas that might be able to use it. There's an idea. Alright. So I'm just smushing this all in here. And then I'm going to let it... <laughs> it's really thick. I'm going to let it sit um, till it's cool and hardened and then I'll come back and I will cut it. Yay. <laughs> Alright, let's cut this. It's only been sitting for like an hour so it is nice and hard and ready to go. And let's see. Bradley said it looked like brownies so I guess that's not a horrible thing. <laughs> but this is what the inside of it looks like. It's a rustic looking soap, to say the least. You can probably clean up the edges a little bit if that will even help <laughs> make it look prettier. But it was a fun experiment. And I'm cutting them pretty chunky just because they're so short, but some of them have different chunks of other soaps in them, which is pretty cool. Reminds me of meatloaf. <laughs> Very nice. So I have to show you what Patrick sent me. I was telling you guys about um, his charity and his positive messages and he's just such a nice person. He's such a, a good soul. And he had a little Christmas giveaway and I won one of the ornaments. So I'll have to show you guys what that is. Let me cut this last one here. There we go. Well, that was fun. All right, so here's all the bars that I got out of that. And I've just gone over and beveled the edges of these, I don't know, to make them look a little better, <laughs> if that's even possible. Um, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. It was a fun experiment. I think next year I'm just going to go with my um, rebatching and making a confetti soap with them. Um, I also got this ornament from Patrick over at Soapy Oaks Farms. If you guys are interested in more soap making stuff, you should go check him out. But he was doing a giveaway for Christmas. He was telling his story and he was sending out some of his ornaments, hoping to give them away to better homes. And I really like this one. It's a little Debbie Tabalt ornament. It's really, really light. Light. It is handmade blown handmade blown glass ornaments, and uh, this one was a Halloween one, and I absolutely loved it. And I'm I'm so happy that I won it. I can't wait to add it to my collection. So, thank you, Patrick, over at Soapy Oaks Farms. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. New to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Any questions or comments? You can leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a very nice day, and I will smell you later.